see, here's the problem. The joke wasn't funny. What is up, YouTube? Welcome to Fred's Full Throttle. This week, I'm gonna cover some of the latest CZ06 news. We've got everything from hardtop convertibles being spotted during final testing, to Taj being spotted in his own CTF car, even a right-hand drive Z06 spotted out and about. And then we have a bit of discussion about the madness around April Fool's Day and what happened there. Lastly, we'll close up with a couple viewers' rides, so let's dive right in. All right, spotted in Michigan this past week, we have a C8Z06 hardtop convertible in Amplify Orange. This might be the same one spotted in my last news video, and you can see there's still that large panel gap over the rear wheel. However, this time the photos are of much better quality. The car has the Z07 package, but the standard black wheels, and it's one of the few examples we've seen with the driver actually using the convertible feature. It doesn't look particularly warm, but with the heated seats turned up and the sound of the V8, I'm pretty sure he's enjoying himself a bit. Up next, we have a few photos from back in January, with a very clear view of a hardtop convertible doing some winter testing out in Michigan. This is a non-Z07 test car. It's got the titanium satin wheels, GT1 seats, and what appear to be the standard brakes. The tire tread also seems to indicate that the car is running on all-season tires. This appears to be a fairly low-option car, and to be honest, it looks fantastic. I think even the low-option cars are going to be a great bang-for-the-buck option when the car is released. Over the past couple weeks, there have been some rumors and reports that many of the Corvette engineering team hadn't actually received their CTF captured test fleet cars yet. This was a sign many were taking as an indication that things are behind schedule. Well, in a happy bit of news, it appears that now Taj actually has his own test car in torch red. It's got the standard wheels and the low spoiler. It's nice to see the executive chief engineer getting a chance to enjoy the fruits of years of labor that the team and him have had in creating the car. Nothing much really to say here other than that I thought it was pretty cool to see. Up next, you may remember in both the Chevy unveiling of the Z06 as well as some of my later videos, it was widely stated that the C8 Z06 would get a right-hand drive version to sell in markets like the UK, Australia, and Japan. Well, we've had the first spotting of one of the test cars in right-hand drive this past week online. A ceramic matrix gray car with a Z07 package was spotted in a parking lot. Though the video doesn't give us much detail, it does show that right-hand drive development is further along than probably what many have suspected. It does remain to be seen if the Z06 will launch in other markets at the same time as the US, but nevertheless, this is interesting to see, especially on US soil. And now for the big story of the past two weeks, April Fool's Day. For those that were lucky to be spared all the drama, I'll do my best to cut through the fluff and relate the story while highlighting a few points that are worth mentioning. So as you probably know, April Fool's Day is on April 1st every year. It's a day where people can play lighthearted pranks, jokes, and other shenanigans on friends, yell April Fools, and everyone has a good laugh. Practiced around the world in many countries, the overall intent is to get a smile or laugh out of somebody, and everyone moves on with their day. More recently, companies and media have gotten in on the fun trying to come up with the next great prank or joke. Some great examples from this year are Chevy revealing the new Silverado convertible, GM pre-announcing the C8 Corvette Trail Boss, and especially the 2024 Corvette Nomad SUV being spotted. Each of these stories is usually accompanied by some obvious photoshops, some funny texts for a good laugh, and we all move on. Nothing but a little bit of harmless fun. Unfortunately, this year, one publication misfired a bit on their story, which caused quite a bit of backlash and upset a bunch of people, and even prompted other news outlets to have to print stories to confirm that the story wasn't really true. Car Buzz, a fairly well-known automotive news site, ran a story titled, Chevrolet Pulls the Plug on the Corvette Z06. I can see what they were going for here. You've got a big group of people shaking with excitement about the car, Chevy, for their part, has kept barely more than an IV drip of information coming out about the car, and here we are almost a third of the way into the year, and we don't even have the pricing, and nothing else has been announced yet, much less order dates. To them, it must have seemed like a target ripe for hitting. Well, it didn't go quite as planned. The article was written in a very matter-of-fact way, and with only a few hints that it might not be genuine, which I'll get into in a minute, at a glance, one could possibly even mistake it for being a real article. There was no punchline, there was no obvious joke, and more than a few feathers got ruffled. Worse still, due to this straight-faced approach to a joke, other media outlets and social media picked up the story so you could find reference to it all over the place, seemingly lending credence to the story. Forums were awash of people asking if it was true, Facebook and social media as well. I even had more than a handful of concerned subscribers email me asking if it was accurate, and if so, what was I going to do? Now, before I go any further, let me assure you, it was just a joke. A poorly executed one, but a joke nonetheless. See, here's the problem. The joke just wasn't funny. 
The key to a good April Fool's joke or prank is to make it reasonably believable at first, like filling an Oreo cookie with toothpaste and it looks more or less right, but then close with either a wink or a nod or some other clear giveaway that it's all in fun, no harm done. The article in question here didn't do that. They missed the fundamental key to a good joke or prank and skipped the punchline. They stated the car was canceled, gave a few quotes, and then closed instead with, and I quote, for the C9 generation, the Z06 will return, but as a range topping all electric halo car. You may not like this new world, but it's the one you've got, so you might as well embrace it. So at the end of the article, they doubled down on their leading premise with a well-known fear of many V8 enthusiasts, full electrification, and then basically said, deal with it. Even if this joke was for a brand or a car that I didn't care about, I don't think I would see the humor. It was just plain badly executed. When I saw the article, I reread it twice, and then I realized it was fake. Here's what jumped out at me. First, right at the top, in the credits, it was filed under April Fool's Day. Next, I didn't recognize the name of the people they were quoting as having made the announcement. Why would the senior vice president of engine development be the one announcing cancellation of the entire car? Then I saw one clear sign. The name was Dr. Ian Michael Joshing. Dr. I am Joshing. I am joking. A few other signs stood out, such as all existing orders having been converted to E-rays, which I should remind you has never been officially announced as a product by GM, and the E-ray name may not even be the final name. And the statement that the Z06 would return as a C9 EV when the C9 hasn't been announced. Some quick Googling further confirmed as no other publication was running with the story initially. And though Car Buzz is a reasonably big publication, if they have quotes from people on the Corvette team, it would be front page news for all publications. Carbuzz likely wouldn't have the exclusive on that kind of news. Lastly, with LT6 development happening as far back as 2014, and the tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars being spent on the C8 Z06, there's no way Chevy would let this car die on the vine, so to speak. It just wouldn't happen. I guess the lesson here is to do what I do. Go in April 1st with a heavy degree of skepticism, and the more outrageous the news, the more proof you need to back it up for me to believe it. To be honest, the other takeaway here is to treat anything you read online with a bit of skepticism and try to identify if something is hype, speculation, rumor, or maybe the actual truth. If you've watched my channel for a little while, you've no doubt realized that I don't make clickbait. I don't run with speculation treating it as fact. I cite my sources and I try to have a reasonable amount of proof before I share a story. This means I'm not usually among the first to break a story, but you have reasonable assurance that I'm sharing something that I've done my due diligence on to make sure it's the truth. I'd rather be accurate than first or get the most views. If that approach resonates with you, please consider clicking subscribe because that'll help me grow. Thanks. Anyway, let's move on to some viewers' rides. Up first, we have Randy's 96 Mustang Cobra SVT. You didn't think I only like Corvettes, did you? I'm a big fan of all sports cars. Randy's had the car for over 25 years and it's got about 49,000 miles on the clock. Randy sent me a full list, but suffice it to say, the car is far from stock and sounds amazing with a dual overhead cam engine. He also mentions that he's excited to get a C8 Z06 with a hardtop convertible and that he looks forward to handing the Cobra over to his son when he's ready. Awesome man, thanks for sending. Up next is an absolutely gorgeous C8 in shadow gray metallic from subscriber Lucho. Lutro received his car in early 2021, and as you can see from the photos, he's got a good eye for photography. We talked a bit about how he shot the car, including the angles, the lighting, the type of camera. He's also running some aftermarket brakes, and the car is on lowering springs. Lutro actually got his Z06 reservation through McMulkin after watching some of my videos, and is excited to get the car with the Z07 package. Thanks for the great photos, and it was a pleasure talking with you, Lucha. Last, but definitely not least, we have a gorgeous C8 hardtop convertible from subscriber Kevin. One thing I love about the car is the high spoiler, which really makes it look aggressive. Though not always a fan of stripes, I also like the tastefully done vinyl up the center, which goes well with the black roof and adds some nice accents to the red of the car. Wonderful car, and I bet you're excited for the driving season. Thanks for sending it in, Kevin. If you're interested in seeing your car on Fred's Full Throttle, please feel free to email me at fredsfullthrottle at gmail.com. Put the subject line of my car and ideally include a photo or two and some information about the car so I can share that with the other viewers. It might take some time for your car to get shown, but I'm doing my best to share as many as I can. Next week, we're going to follow up with another C8 Z06 deep dive for picking out the options on the car. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, Fred out. <laughs>